I'm the Kovostov champion. I'm also the 1991-1992 Street Fighter 2 regional champ. He's a soul flawless legend zero hour with the literal starter gun of destiny, Kovostov. So, you're going to be wondering how the hell is this possible and what's going on with this. Well, there's two reasons for this video. One, to show something off. And two, to um, show you that literally, if there was no timer in Zero Hour, or if the timer was increased for Legend difficulty at least, it would make the activity too easy. Because I'm literally doing that with the starter gun that we get from Destiny 1 slash 2, Kvostov, right? Which was a 600, I believe it's a 600 RPM auto rifle. Um, and it has no perks. But obviously we are getting it via the uh, final shape update as an uh, as a exotic variant, I believe. And it's going to have unique... Um, it's going to have a unique setup, right? Now, this isn't the first time they brought Kvostov back. They brought it back in D1, and it was rubbish. They made it an auto rifle, a pulse rifle, and a scout rifle all in one. So I'm reserved on whether it's going to be actually good in Final Shape. I think it will be better than what the D1 reprisal was. If anyone remembers, we had to look for the Kvostov parts in, in Cosmodrome and build it which was a cool quest at the time so they have paid homage to the gun before and they failed so i'm just letting you know about that all right i don't think they'll fail this time because it looks like it's doing like you know it bounces between enemies seven times it's all about seven um hopefully they they make it so that it's good enough on on the level of quicksilver storm I want it that power, powerful. Maybe maybe slightly less than Quicksilver Storm, the, the old version of that weapon, so that we're actually using the gun in GMs. Because Kvostov's, like, as I say, a starter weapon. It's an important weapon to the game uh, in terms of, like, memories and stuff. So hopefully they do it justice. So in this run, we're using blue gear as well. So we're not just using Kvostov. We are using blue weapons. We're not using armor blue rarity we're just using standard armor with standard builds that i would use the reason for this is simple if we ha if we equip 1600 armor blue blue uh, blue weapons and blue armor we are we cannot complete the mission we will do immunity damage all enemies will be immune to us so that wasn't possible if it was possible that's what i would have done on this run Right, but it's 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 not possible unless I have eighteen ten blues, which aren't dropping now in the game. They they've they've removed blue gear, right, a while back, which blue gear used to drop at power. It doesn't now. So for challenges like this, where we want to do like blue gear runs, you can't do them now uh, if you're doing immune damage to enemies. So that's what I'm telling you. The blue gear is impossible to do the, on this challenge. However. It is possible to do it with blue and white weapons. Because even though they're 1600 in power, it's tied to your overall power. However, I believe that the individual power of each gun takes a play into that calculation, or used to. So it's, a bit, it's quite complicated, but... Because we've got an overall power that's higher than 1600, these weapons are going to be doing more damage than what that is. Uh, actually, quite surprising a, a lot. You're going to see how much damage we do with the sniper and the linear. So we picked a blue linear called King Cobra and this solar sniper, which is absolutely wrecking. The handling of this sniper is so good. All right. Uh, really good, this rapid fire frame. And it's got field prep. Absolute go it sniper. It's got field prep. So um, this isn't as much of a guide. I I ask you to please support the official release of of my Soul Flaws Legend Zero Hours, which I've done a few. Uh, support the official releases. This is not a official release on how to Soul Flaws this. Um, you're gonna learn a lot of things from it, um, quite a lot, but it's more for entertainment purposes. 
right? But you you will learn things from it because I'm describing what we do here, there, and everywhere, right? So we've cleared out all the enemies here. Um, as I said, not too trouble. I I haven't sweat. I haven't sweated once. Right, because there's two reasons for that. Number one, because we've got this build on, on an Arc Warlock. Uh, and number two, Zero Hour is like, I know everything about Zero Hour, just about. I'm just about knowing everything about Zero Hour there is to know, really. So, it's not much of a problem to us. Look at the damage that this sniper does. Alright, pay attention to the damage that we actually do with it, uh, especially later on at the boss fight. So we're going to use a bit of linear damage here to take down the tank. We're going to save super. I could have supered the tank, which will melt tanks, but uh, I chose not to do that. Because we've run out of ammo now, and I want to use my super up uh, to the next section. But to be honest with you, it doesn't matter. I could have supered the tank on this strategy because we're going to come to the part of the cheese. Right, so if people are going to cheese this for the solo flawless zero hour, I don't mind because there's no emblem tied to it. All you will get is a time score of one. So if people are cheesing zero hour, I'm not dead against it because it doesn't matter to me because there's no emblem tied to it. If there was an emblem tied to it, I would get my back up about it and I'd be like, hey, stop cheesing it for emblems because you're cheating yourself. But if you're just cheesing it for a damn triumph and just have a little fun, I don't mind that. Uh, is it wrong? No, because there's no emblem tied to it. There's no loot tied to it. Well, there is loot. I suppose there's quest chains and stuff like that tied to it. Yeah, kind of. But uh, as I say, I don't have a huge problem with it. Found shape is right around the corner. Like I'm going to like you know start going to court about zero hour claims and stuff. I'm not bothered about it. So, hey, take advantage of the zero hour cheese. I'm going to show you it in a minute. I'm not the founder. Um... Not that it matters who the founder was. It makes no odds. You've you got, you got to remember, with Destiny 2, especially Destiny 2, do you realise there's people testing 24 hours every day, right, on, ex on exploits? Okay, so there'll definitely always be something found out about this game because there's so many people testing the game. No wonder Bungie doesn't need people to play test because we're doing it for them and happily. So many players are, are playtesting. I guess they just find it fun. A lot of people just find it fun playtesting the game. But they're not getting paid to do it. Unless they're doing some sort of Twitch or YouTube based around it. But for your average players, they're not getting paid for it. They just love Destiny. They just love finding stuff out. Um, and as I say, this was a really good find by whoever, whoever did it. And not a good find in terms of like... It's just a, just an interesting find, the way they got about it, which makes sense because the timer does disappear. So I'll explain that right now, right? So the timer on the left-hand side, as you can see, right, it's ticking down 12 minutes. If this goes to zero, we lose. We go to orbit. To remove the timer, to have a timeless zero hour, you need to get to this section and clear out all the enemies. There's other ways of doing this, but this is the most consistent way I'm led to believe. Kill all enemies apart from one dreg. Get him one shot. Get one drag, one shot. Okay? It's important that you do this. Right? So we'll skip ahead. I, I was AFK for 10 minutes. So we'll skip ahead to the, the last five seconds. Wait till the timer gets to, to one second. Look at this. Merely the enemy exactly on one second. Timer disappears. Clicks down to zero. But, it, but then it doesn't have time to register. Therefore, you are now in a timeless zero hour transition. So now you have unlimited time to complete the Zero Hour Legend. As I said, please support the official releases from me about the Solo Force Legend. Okay? Uh, don't cheat yourself. But if you want to have fun and test weapons in this, then that's really good. It's a good way to, for us to test stuff. Especially me. Because even though I don't test bugs, I don't. But I do test loadouts. I'm a loadout tester. That's my biggest thing, to be honest. So I'm, I can now actually test things in Legend Zero to see what would be viable, right, for boss things. Like, you know, is there some unique weapon that, other than Dragon's Breath that might be good in this? There could be, all right? What about a freaking Darcy run, right? Darcy, uh, is it possible? Probably, might, probably is. Anything's possible in the game as long as you, you can. So... 
you know, that's what I'm saying. It's good for me for the test and things. It doesn't matter to me about the soul force. I already have it. You know that I already have it. So it, it doesn't matter to me for that. But it, it it is fun in that sense that I can actually test a load out for a legit run. We didn't have any eager edge ammo here uh, on my, my traversal. So my traversal was terrible on this run. Oh, by the way, the Exploder Shanks will one-shot us, one us at this power. They are Skull Exploder Shanks. Skull Exploder Shanks. So Destiny 2's power level system is something that is one of the weirdest power level systems I've ever seen in any game. Because they don't even use half of their power level system, or a third of it, shall we say. Because there are three tiers of enemies. Number one tier is base power enemies that are within your power level. So if, say, if you're 1810 power, and you're fighting 1810 power enemies, excluding zero hour, because zero hour is unique, just saying something else, some other activity, the enemy will appear to be at your power level. This will be indicated by the symbol. It will be just a normal symbol for that enemy type. Yeah? If we are under-leveled, the enemy will have a sword icon to say that they are uh, overpowering us. Right? Which is generally 25. But it can be lower than this. It can be 15. It can be, it can be lower than that as well even. Right? But then we have an extra tier of enemy that are skull enemies. And then you have, actually, you have another tier above that where you do immune damage to the enemies. But obviously, that doesn't matter. So the skull tier is something that Bungie does not utilize this enemy type because it is technically our enemy type. They don't utilize it in the game anywhere. There's nowhere in the end game content realm where this happens. I suppose Master Raids if you're underleveled. Master Raids, Master Dungeons if you're underleveled. So what I'm saying to you is this. People seem to think that Grandmaster Nightfalls is the true end game of Destiny 2, but it isn't. It isn't, because the, the highest, hardest hitting enemy type are skull enemies. And what I'm trying to tell you is, Bungie isn't utilizing skull enemy types in the game. They probably think that they hit too hard and it wouldn't work in end game. They could utilize him in some fashion. I don't know exactly how they could do it. Say, for example, we had a mode above GM. Where the enemies are skull enemies, but the game gives you a buff to counter this. Whether it be small arms from D1, whether it be heavyweight for one time, whether it be prism, the old prism where you, where you go from solar arc void, but it wouldn't be burn, it would be surges. Have these sort of unique modifiers to go around it. They could create a whole new end game experience based around the skull enemy type. Honestly, I don't know why they don't just do it for something. Try to entertain it because the mechanics are in the game. They're in the game. The skull enemies. Why have we got skull enemies? I ask you that question. I'm going to ask you, why have we got skull enemies? You can't answer the question because they're not used for anything. And, and they were used at one point in the game. Uh, if you remember when it was used... Then let me know. I know when it was used. I bet you don't know when it was used. I bet you I bet you money that you don't remember when skull enemies mattered for D2. Not mattered, but you could you could fight against them reliably. There was a system in place for this. There isn't a system in in the place for the game now for that. But that's my little spiel on the enemy type thing. Look, look, we got up against skull turrets. Look at this. So boss fight. We Kavostov, how did it go? Well, it went decent. Obviously, we were timeless. Uh, you know, we have no timer. So, but I did try to use Kavostov when I could. Um, it's doing really poor damage against the turrets. Look at this, seventies. Um, pulse nades. Whenever we get a pulse nade, we'll do it. But with this, with because we're because we are nerfing ourselves. Okay, we need to approach the boss fight in reverse to what I would usually do or what someone else would do to do a Solar Floss Legend, all right? So the reverse strategy is clear out everything, take everything in small steps rather than big steps because to to, a, to do the Solar Floss Legend for zero hour, you need to take big steps. 
you need to do chunks of damage to the boss you need to send the boss left right mid top mid spawn in all the servitors get the tanks down as quickly as possible that's what makes zero hour zero hour it's in the title of the name it's a timed exotic mission and the best timed exotic mission that's ever happened in D d2 in my opinion better than whisper better than whisper e well Whisper's still amazing, like, let's not take it away from that, like, the law surrounding it, the weapon that you get from it, the chests, the quests, the impact that it had when it came out, etc, etc, but Zero Hour is a better time mission, because it's literally in the, in the title, and it's more, time is just so important to the mission, it's, a, it's an important element. Now, over the, over the years, people have twined and complained about time missions, saying it ruins the game. Hey, look at this gameplay here. I'm beating the mission with the base version gun. The lowest power gun in the game. Solo. Flawless. Legend. I know we've done an exploit for the timer. But imagine there was no timer. Imagine if the time was 40 minutes. 40 minutes is, is as good as infinite, really. Because we can beat the mission in 40 minutes. Alright? So, that's why it's a good... It's a reminder to people, look... We need timed stuff. That is a way of putting pressure on the player to strategize rooms. Don't listen to like Paul Tassi. Like, honestly, Paul Tassi saying, oh, I, I don't like time missions. I can't look at the scenery. When Presage came out, what a ridiculous comment. What a ridiculous... And he's always said that. Listen, don't listen to him. He's just an article writer. He's just a writer. That's all he is. He's not good at Destiny 2. He knows nothing about Destiny 2. All he knows is about his, his dumb articles. He do, he's not a proper Destiny 2 player. So players like that who say, I don't want timed activities, you don't really know what you're saying. You're just somebody who pops on for Tuesday reset and exits on Wednesday and you go and play Fortnite or something. Okay? Those aren't true D2 players. Paul's just doing it for his job, for Forbes. And he's, a good, he's, he's good at writing his articles. He's good at all that, but he's not good at playing the game and he's not good at YouTube. Don't listen to those types of players, all right? Listen to the players that play, that care about the game, actually. Those players will, will tell you what's good for the game, generally speaking. Uh, not always. We get it wrong, all right? If you, especially if you're considered an elitist, you'll... Um, you know, sometimes you can go overboard and say, oh, I need this nerfed, I need that nerfed, and then you're like catering for the top 1%, which we can't do that. I think what they should aim for is the top 10%, because then the top 20 and 30% players can aspire to be a top 10% player, and then it just incentivizes everything. Get the loot up, like they've done with, into the, uh, into the light, then that incentivizes more casual players. All right, people who are not in the top 50% bracket were are happy because they're getting loot. The people below the 50% bracket are happy because there's god rolls to chase for and there's things that we can do with, with those god rolls. And it makes the game interesting. That's why Into the Light's been so su successful. So just more of that, which I believe there will be. So... Yeah, I, I, like I said, this, was, this wasn't bad at all because, look, we've got time. We're clearing out all the mines. What this run does show you is every single ad spawn, um, you know, and how to exactly play it. Because, obviously, how this room's meant to be played is you rotate. So when the boss rotates left, you're at the back of the map. But you need, you need the back of the map cleared, right, for, for you to actually be effective. Now, look at how good Ark Soul is in this. That's why I picked Ark Warlock. Because I actually know that Ark Warlock's the best class in this for Zero Hour. If we were to get rid of Artifact mods and just judge a class on how it performs, like, generally speaking, apart from Strand Titan, which Strand Titan is amazing, but apart, if we were to just forget about Strand Titan, I think Ark Warlock's the best class in this. Because it's got the most consistent supers against servers, if you saw that. It's got good ag clear with the Ark Soul. It's supplementing this... My weapons are terrible. But the build is supplementing it, right, to make them usable. Which is kind of funny. You know? So, yeah, like I say, it, the build's really good. Which I have advocated Ark Warlock for ages. About how good he can be and, 
you know, and stuff they can do. We're going to get a healing reef down here. We're going to try and manage, juggle our ammo a little bit. It's a good place to stand for the air shanks. The auto rifle's actually doing similar damage to what a 1810 auto rifle would do. Think of a 60, think of, think of a 600 RPM 1810 auto rifle in your mind now. If you were to go and use that, it would do similar damage to Kvostov because, again, it, there's this weird, funky thing in the game where, yeah, you're using a 1600 power weapon, but it takes your overall power level into account, so therefore the, the Kvostov will do more damage than what it should. It's a funky cal calculation, all right? It's, it's, it's weird, but... I just thought this would be unique because once I saw saw this exploit yesterday, I was like, right, what could I do with this? Um, I immediately wanted to do white gear, but you can't. It's impossible. Because every gear slot would be 1600 power and you would do immune damage to the enemies. So the only reason why it's impossible is because of that. Now, you could maybe do some white gear and then some white weapons... And then maybe a, a legendary thrown in there to bump the the power up a little bit. Like I'm 1755 right now, um, but it's like at that point I'm like I'm not too bothered. I'm not investing too heavily into this video. It's just for a um, a little bit of an entertainment video. That's it. That's all it is. Uh, we're coming up towards the final week before final ship. So, you know, there's other things that I'm to be getting on with. I don't need to fully invest in, in into this. And I've uploaded a lot of Zero Hour anyways. Um, we'll see what else is on for me this week in terms of what I want to upload and stuff. Um, but, yeah, we'll just see with that. We're going to send the boss to middle. My strategy here is to jolt middle. Like, look at this. Get a jolt off right away. That jolts the boss and all the enemies. Bit of Kvostov plus jolt here. Look at that. Just clears out everything. Get a healing rift down, and then we can actually really push with these weapons. We're going to take out these remaining shanks to our right. Looking at our armor drops as well. We were gonna super the boss here, but I figured it'd be better to super later on, and it was it was probably the right choice. He's the extra enemy spawn. Look at that. I'll have to push back a little bit. No need. Use a bit of Kvostov on these orange bars. Doing good damage to them. It's actually doing all right damage. Pulse nade missed. That's our first miss of the run. My only worry about the Kvostov in terms of like foul ship is end game because it's a 600 rpm auto they're not really special i believe it's 600 rpm i'm under the impression that it is as in the new one um they don't have the range and it's the same failure that pulse rifles fall, fall short by is that they don't have the range we'll have to see how it performs quicksilver storm is an example of an auto rifle that they done justice by and was more than usable in GMs. In actual fact, it was meta. So I, I need, I want them to have the same treatment as that. Although there was a GL built within it. So that's another reason why it was so good. But even without that, just the actual hitting enemies with it was melting the enemies quickly. So hopefully, hopefully the the the, the, the uh, ricochet shots or whatever it's called does enough damage to the enemies to warrant using it. That's my only fear because if, if it isn't, when Final Shape comes out, we will use it for a week and then put it in the vault. That's what's going to end up happening if it's not strong enough. Hopefully they, they just make it strong enough so that it is, like I say, on Quicksilver Storm's level. So we'll try and get our crits here. We'll use the linear. A crit we can't really hear from there, so that's fine. We're going to leave that. Look for some more ammo. And we'll get a better angle on that tank. We could have used a Chaos Reach on one of the tanks. But again, I wanted to... I probably wouldn't have got it back for when I want it. Which I want it at the start of when the Brig spawns in. The Brig and the Servitor. So I, I was like... You know, in a few moments I'm going to melt these tanks. One's all, almost already dead. So you know, you know. So we're good. We don't need to. Cause one kill reach would kill a tank, off the rip. Um, but like I said, it didn't matter too much. 
Put some sniper armor over here. We'll get a pulse nade down on the tank. Should do good damage. Pulse nades generally do. Get some crits in here as well. We don't need that much ammo for the final phase either. I'm, I was actually surprised in how quickly we killed the brig. Because we are literally taking the, our time with this run, of course. Clearing out every single enemy, doing this, doing that. But obviously the entire run was slow for the boss fight it, of, compared to what we would run. But what surprised me is how quickly I killed the brig. I suppose that's a combination of the fact that we've got crit weapons on for final stand on brig. And the fact that Chaos Ridge does so much damage to the brig etc we're going to do a bit of Kvostov damage here try and break a leg let's see what we'll see what it does again it's doing more damage than what it should be because of our power so look at that we actually even broke a leg three mags or so whatever it was again it's going to perform like a standard 600 rpm auto just with no perks basically which that's some of you because some of you run the wrong perks on your autos anyways so if you're rocking the wrong perks, my Kvostov will do, do just as good as your auto because you're probably using some damn auto that you shouldn't be. Autos are popular, especially amongst newer players. Um, that's the thing about Destiny is when a new player starts, the favorite weapon automatically is auto. Why is that? Well, because it's a fully automatic weapon. It's the almost, it's the easiest, most versatile weapon at the start when you first play. All Destiny 2 PvE players go through this. Alright? So, for the first few months, they're auto or oh, That's all they play. I know a couple of people, a couple of my mates, who have never played Destiny 2, and then they come on Destiny 2, and it's like, oh, I like all rifles. It's like, yeah, but once you play the game long enough, you realise that they're the worst weapon in the game. Okay? Once you realise that, bows, hand cannons, scouts. Scouts, maybe not as much, but sometimes they have... Sometimes they are... Um, important like in a mission like this they are but generally it's you know it's it's bows and hand cannons they are the kings of like uh weapons i'm on about legendaries here i'm not on about exotics because exotics are different so yeah like for so for newer players that are maybe watching because there's a lot of new players now stay away from autos master them quickly master how they work etc etc you know you know get used to them yeah but quickly go to another weapon type to gain skill i honestly i've trained so many people about in destiny over the years and that's my biggest thing is get off that weapon type because autos are easy to use but they're not that good um so yeah get good with hand cannons because they're literally like the best weapon types in the game now better than smgs i've spoke about this before in the past like smgs they were the king of like I'd clear, you know, that short range. No, they're not now. Hand cannons beat them. They kill red bars quicker. They've got more range than what an SMG is, obviously. They're just the better close to mid range option. Longer range, bows are king. You've, uh, you, you know that I've always thought that bows are the best weapons in the game because when you're doing weapon, when you're doing damage from range, all right, um, Bows don't have that range drop off. And it's just consistent damage, the stagger damage that they do, the getting you know, doing damage to the enemies and not getting hit. You can do that with a bow. You can strafe in and out of cover easier than any other weapon. Like that that applies to everyone, by the way, just because of inherently our bow works. There's no sustained fire. Because even with a scout you've got to sustain fire. Whereas with a bow you don't. So you, you can hit an enemy and then not get hit. It's the biggest thing. So that's that's the biggest thing. Try to stay away from autos. I know I'm showing you a run where I'm using auto, but this is for entertainment purposes. But yeah, newer players, don't be using autos. Only the exotic ones. You know, master what you've got. You know, in some cases, yeah, you can use the auto in PvE, but generally speaking you're putting yourself at a disadvantage if you use autos just because of how they work uh they might put out decent damage at times yeah certain rolled ones but you should only be using them if you, if you need to use them for a champ mod in endgame stuff that's literally it or if it's like quicksilver storm or 
um, sweet business because sweet is sweet business is one of the best auto rifles in the game now. It literally is. I'm not memeing that either. Um, so yeah, you know that's what you need to do. Stay away from certain weapon types. We're just using the sniper here uh, to take out any uh, snipers and stuff left up. Take out some of these shanks. We've got a super to use. I don't want to use it yet, though. I want to get the full room clear because no enemies will respawn from here on out. It's just me and the brig. Uh, and we end up melting the brig as well or doing quite a bit of damage. Well, we, we should be doing... We might be doing less damage as well overall as opposed to an 1810 gear run or 1830 gear, whatever power I am. I think you do slightly less uh, because I'm 1755. But although that is that is chunking for Chaos Rage. So we nearly got caught out there. But that's fine. We've still maintained our solo flawless. We're going to go back. Now just look, at the dam look at the damage we end up doing here with this. Look at this sniper. It's a freaking blue sniper. Look at this. That's comparable to other snipers. That we're using this because I've actually used them. It's not comparable to kinetic tremors supremacy. I understand that, but that's that's rewind rounds and stuff. But if I just had a standard like solar sniper, legendary wise, it would do similar damage to what that's doing. That's kind of crazy. We'll get the we'll get the finishing kill with Kavostov. It has to happen. But yeah, that that's the, the so far legend with a odd loadout. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.